Greetings and welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and this is the fourth part in our dialogue system for Game Maker Studio. Up until this point, we have created a system that an NPC can talk to a player, showing in a sprite box, and also display messages, and we as the player can choose between them, but not act on our choices. So let's go ahead and dive right in, and I'm going to show you how I've set it up so that you can have it basically an endless conversation. Inside of here, we already have uh, the dialogue, but we want that dialogue to be able to be acted upon and then, depending on which one we choose, display a new set of choices and uh, dialogue from the NPC. The way that we're going to do this is by adding information onto the string uh, called concatenation, and we're going to then parse that information later on inside of the script so that we can pull it when we need it. So I'm going to say plus and I'm going to put in a 0, 1 here. And what that is going to do is that this 0, 1 is going to tell, once we've chosen it, where the dialogue should proceed to. Because up until now, we've been in zeros. We've been at the first index of our two-dimensional rate. We've been in 0, 1 up to 0, 4. But we want to then move, if the first option is chosen, to index 1, and we want to start at 0. And the zero is always what the NPC is going to be saying. And he's going to say, I'm glad to hear that. And then we're going to add in a few more. And this, I'm going to show you a couple different things. So the first one is going to be using 99. This is a trick that I am using, saying that uh, if this number is 99, then the conversation is just going to end. Uh, that the NPC isn't going to say anything else, and the conversation will be over. So we'll go ahead and apply this to two of these. And then this last one will apply 02. And I'll set up a dialogue for that. And I'll ask if he really wants us to bite him. And if we add in more here to 1, this is what the choices will be displayed after he says that. And we'll just display two choices. And for the first one, actually for both of these, it will just end the conversation. But it's going to show you that you can have basically an endless conversation depending on how many dialogue options that you set up for the NPC to have. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to jump into the choice box and we're going to add in a variable. And this is going to be called my number without two capitals there. And that's all we need there. But then we're going to jump into the script, show choices, and we are going to set this up. We're going to pull the information out of the string. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull, <laughs> we're going to pull my number. And the way we're going to do this is by using a function called string copy. And so we're going to say which part of the string we want and how many characters of what we want. So we're going to go to the end and pull out the last two characters. So the string we're using is my message, since we have already set it up up here. And we're going to get uh, string length, and we're going to start with string message. And this is going to subtract one, and we want two of the characters. Now, the reason that we need to subtract 1 is because the index for a string actually starts at 1 instead of 0, like a lot, like the way computers actually count. So, uh, we are starting at 1 with this function, but string length is going to start counting at 0, and so we just need to compensate for that. So, we're going to go back 1 and pull out the last two characters. And then we need to say, my number is equal to real capital user, not my friend, e equal to my number. So real is the function that just takes a string and makes it a real number, an integer. Otherwise, when we try to use my number, string copy returns a string. And when we try to use my number inside of like a for loop, the game will just crash and you won't even get an error message like I got working on this and you will be left quite frustrated, let me tell you. So turn it into an actual integer. And then we want to parse my message so that it is not displaying the numbers to the player because that would just look weird. So we're going to say my message is equal to string copy. We're going to copy it again. We want to do my message starting at index of 1, going to the length of my message, 
minus two. So now let's go ahead and run this and we're gonna check to see if this works properly. We should show the choices, save the data in the choice box and then get rid of the numbers at the end which is exactly what we did. So this way we can actually hide data inside of our string. We can hide as much data as you want as long as you parse it out properly. This is just a simple way to hide where to go in the next dialog, but if you wanted to hide other objects or cutscenes inside of here, you could potentially do that as long as you parse the string properly. Great. The last thing we want to do is inside of the script show choices. We're going to need this in just a little bit. We're going to set the obj dialog system dot alarm zero equal to 10. And I'll explain this in just a second. And then in the obj dialog system, you're going to come in here. We're going to add the alarm, drag and drop some code. And all you need is just some code in there. As long as there is a piece of code inside of the alarm, it will run. Otherwise it won't, even if you tell it to, because it knows there's no code to run. And then inside of the step, what we're gonna do now is set up when the player presses spacebar. Now, if we don't have this alarm to check, uh, what would happen is the player presses space, the choice boxes get created, and then it's going to press space again instantly, and it's gonna move on without actually displaying the options because of the way GameMaker checks the code. It all checks it at once, and it's gonna say, you press space, and I was checking for space in two different areas, so both of them should go forward. With this alarm though, we can say, don't do that immediately because I want the choice boxes to actually show up for longer than you know, one frame and the player can't even see them. So we're gonna say, if keyboard check pressed VK space and alarm zero is less than zero, and the reason it's less than zero is because the alarm will start at whatever we tell it to, which in this case is 10. And at zero, it will actually run the code, and then it will go down to negative one, which is where it will stay until it is activated again. So if we're checking if it's less than zero, that means it's gone all the way through and run the code, and we've got it going. So now we want to say index one is equal to the choice box. So we're going to say choice box current choice, because we only need the information from the current choice box, and we're going to say my number, because index 1 is where we're going to jump to in the dialog. Index 2 we're also going to set equal to 0. We're going to set showing choices equal to false. We're going to set current choice equal to 0, because it's going to reset. And then we need to destroy the choice boxes. The way to do this is just with a for loop, so i equals zero. i is less than the array length, one dimension of choice box, and increment i. And we're just gonna say with the choice box that we are currently in, instance destroy. So that's gonna take all the choice boxes and delete them because once we've pressed spacebar, we've made a choice and we no longer want to see those options in front of us. One thing that we also need to do is say choice box equals zero. Now this might seem a little odd, but if we don't reset the choice box array, I found that there were several issues that were coming up because of different places of code that were checking it and it, was, it didn't have anything inside of it. So we'll destroy the choice boxes and then we're going to actually make choice box no longer an array. Now, once we call script show choices again, it will be created and there'll be no problem because you can go from being an array to not an array inside of game maker language just fine. And we're going to check the situation if the index is equal to 99 because remember that's the thing that I've set up saying that if it's 99 we're going to exit right away. So if index 1 doesn't equal 99 then we want to continue talking. So we're going to say script dialog get called. Otherwise we're going to be all done. We're going to set Sarah's alarm equal to 10 so that she can move. And that's really all we need to do. So let's press play and make sure this is working. So we'll come up here. Okay. So let's say it's going great. He shows that. I say spacebar and 
that's what that is. Now let's go to bite me because there was more of an option there. So there we go. So now we can have several options inside of there. Now let's jump into the robot and ah so it only displayed the no there and that's because of my fault. My dialogue was set to 2-2 two, two right here so 2-1 had actually been re-overlaid twice. Let me run that one more time just to show you that that was my fault and if you were following along you probably caught it. Let's jump up here, go to bite me, and voila. That's the end of the conversation. That way you can have a limitless conversation because you could, in theory, jump back to zero if you wanted to. You could just put zero, zero, and then the conversation would restart. And you could just go on that forever and ever and ever. And that's all I want to show you for this part. In the next and last part, we are going to do three things. I'm going to show you how to have the text uh, come onto the screen, just kind of one character at a time. It makes it look a lot fancier. And I'm going to show you how to be able to skip through that if you don't want to show that. I'll also show you how to actually have interactions based on the conversations that you have with certain characters at certain times. And I will show you how to have the same object have different dialogue based on the specific instance in the room. So if we have 10 robots in the room, but they all look the same, we could actually have each robot say something different based on the creation code that we give them. So join me for the next part, and I am excited because we're going to be wrapping this up and you will have a complete, finished, really good looking dialogue system. So that's all for now. As always, keep making great games, and I will talk to you later.